Hi folks, today it's 27th of November 2024 and uh, Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 has been officially released at uh, 9 o'clock Central Europe time. And um, so we can talk about it, we can talk all about it, there are no secrets anymore, uh, I've also got uh, the official documentation. So now let's see the light version of the module. Uh, it was not presented on Munich uh, Electronics Fair and uh, we can see that there is no EMC module and there is also no selector like we can see here. We can also see that release number is 4 for the uh, light version of the module and this version of the module is release 3. If you compare it to the original Raspberry Pi 5, uh, we can see that uh, program system on chip is pretty much the same, maybe uh, some slight differences because this one can support 16 gigabytes. This can be 16 gigabytes. It was not marked here, neither here. But if you are going to look at the specification, uh, you can see actually that there is uh, an option of 16 gigabytes and this option also has a price uh, actually, you have base price. This is for a module with two gigabytes of RAM, no EMC module, and no Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. But uh, of course, uh, if you want to have uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can have it. This is uh, a valid configuration. And uh, in this case, if you want to buy this module, it would have costed you seventy dollars more than uh, the base model with two gigabytes of RAM. This actually means that you have paid for the module one hundred and fifteen dollars. Uh, you can also see the prices of EMC, uh, flash RAM or memory. It actually re replaces the SD card. Uh, I was wrong about uh, it uh, replacing SSD drive because it's much slower but one uh, good thing about EMC memory uh, I can show you how it looks like from the bottom side I do have a photo from the bottom side of the module uh, this one is of course not, not the light version because it has this chip this is uh, EMC memory uh, and uh, there are various sizes of this memory however uh, the sizes supported would be probably this this five uh, or okay if I say that there is uh, zero okay uh, it would have been uh, obviously a different PCB without this selector but okay we have five different sizes this is actually very beneficial for industrial applications where having an SD card might not be uh, the best idea because uh, there was might be some dust getting into this connector or whatever because we have to know that this board is the first board that was ever made for Computer Model 5 and this board is actually more or less made for a development kit so you can use it uh, to connect your module to see how it works uh, you can more or less use it as a desktop but for industrial application you might not need this one but uh, this would of course still be interesting because uh, SSD drive is much faster than uh, EMC uh, module but uh, you have to know that many industrial applications uh, do not actually need a very very fast drive so an EMC module might have been a great solution because in this case they can use much smaller uh, base board or uh, carrier board uh, with only the things that uh, are needed for the industrial application okay let me let me show you something more about this module okay uh, Okay, from the bottom side, we can see now this uh, two 100 pin connectors. Uh, these are actually uh, to conduct all the signals from the compute model to the baseboard. We also see the connectors here. That is, these are female connectors, and uh, the connectors on the board, uh, the compute model, are male connectors. 
so this is also very interesting okay maybe we can stay at this board right now when uh, it's already opened uh, we can see we have fan connector here we have talked uh, previously about it it's compatible with Raspberry Pi 5 it's exactly uh, the same as you can see here it's exactly the same it's got four pins and this one has got four pins it's okay uh, ex except for be being differently marked uh, I've also talked the last time about these uh, connectors but honestly uh, I was not aware of the fact that this actually pins uh, you can solder a header here but these are meant to disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module if you do have um, a compute module with uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module installed uh, then and it, you, and, uh, you don't want to use uh, your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth you can this is ground you can make a connection from here or from here and with one of this uh, you would have disabled uh, Bluetooth module and with the other one you would have disabled the Wi-Fi module this was also not possible to be seen on Munich presentation but it's also very interesting because if you need here we do have uh, expansion board with 40 pins and if you do need these pins to operate on 1.8 volt you can do this by uh, actually unsoldering this uh, zero armor resistor and placing it here and resoldering it but uh, default is of course 3.3 volts that we are all used for uh, and what about these two jumper connectors actually now I know exactly what they are used for they are useful to conduct uh, E2C signals uh, from uh, GPIO 0 and GPIO 1 uh, pins uh, to this cam uh, camera display connector if you want to use uh, this connector to connect a digital camera digital display you of course have to place jumpers here to, to connect the sig signals in another case when you don't need this one you can use these signals for anything you want this JPIO pins okay now let's get to this 14 pin header it's got um, power button this is uh, exactly what I've explained to you last time uh, this was, was a little bit tricky it's not connected or related to any kind of software function but it's very hardwired it's hardwired I'll show you it's hardwired here on this one and this pin actually uh, Raspberry Pi 5 doesn't have this one but uh, Raspberry, Pi 5, Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 does it, have it and this means actually that if you connect this one to the ground uh, power management uh, chip would have been disabled and put into the lowest power slate possible so this would be some kind of a hard switch off uh, switch uh, because power on button is a soft switch on switch off uh, this one is hard so if you want to be sure that the device would not have been working you simply connect this uh, this to probably you have to send this signal from another circuit and so on uh, so you can actually be sure that uh, in no circumstance uh, Raspberry Pi 5 would have awakened this is synchronization output I was also not sure about it when I made my previous video uh, it is actually used to synchronize Ethernet network uh, related to IEEE -E -E -E, uh, 1588 standard and uh, this is uh, for a very precise synchronization if needed so usually you won't need this signal this is USB OTG signal I was right about this signal because this signal actually selects what uh, this pin uh, this connector uh, USB-C connector is gonna be used for uh, in Raspberry Pi 5 we have to do this programmatically so you write in your config uh, txt file what you actually want to do with this one here we have both options either you can do it programmatically through config txt file or you can simply place a uh, jumper here and you would tell it to be host or to be or without a jumper to be 
a device so so you can as uh, you can uh, make a selection only with a jumper so uh, you don't have to worry so much about configuring it so here we have an EMC boot jumper uh, why is this jumper important because this jumper can disable boot from EMC this is actually meant because uh, if something goes wrong with uh, the information in this module and um, when uh, Raspberry Pi 5 uh, actually uh, Raspberry Pi uh, actually VCM 2712 a system on chip is booted from this chip and if there is uh, compromised information it may not have been able to boot in this case you can place this jumper and you would have booted from one of the USB ports so you, you would be able to boot uh, so you would prioritize uh, boot from this USB ports I guess it would have also booted from this M.2 but not um, uh, M.2 SSD drive but not in a case that you would have wanted to uh, reload your bootloader if you want to reload bootloader then you will have to place probably a USB uh, key or something into this uh, connector and it would have been uh, automatically read at startup and uh, the bootloader would have been uh, refreshed so this is another one this is first I was also right about this thing uh, this pin is meant to prevent any kind of writing to EEPROM on the module. This means that actually uh, you, hardware, you use actually some kind of hardware protection to prevent any kind of writing to the EEPROM uh, with a bootloader. And if you want to uh, refresh a bootloader, then uh, you of course have to remove this uh, jumper connection okay we have a battery holder it's uh, CR2032 battery um, usually it's meant for this one so this is non rechargeable battery uh, these are the two diodes uh, one is status uh, this, this, this work the same uh, and the other one uh, would actually show whether there is uh, power present this is power over net net connector uh, what else oh okay this is power on button you can use this one or you can connect your own power on button here we also have this two normal sized uh, HDMI connectors this is more robust than we are used to on uh, Raspberry Pi 5 if we take a look uh, again at Raspberry Pi 5 uh, we can see that actually Raspberry Pi 5 uh, it's got this connector here so here we have this connectors uh, display camera connector here and here there are a little bit different connectors but actually the same signals we don't have this with the analog video output uh, how fast it works uh, as a matter of fact uh, at first uh, I thought that uh, compute models would be a little bit slower than uh, Raspberry Pi but it turned out that uh, actually they have an initial speed of um, to, uh, 0.4 gigahertz so they were just as fast as uh, Raspberry Pi uh, probably also overclock them so I don't think that there is any problem by doing it except for maybe uh, heat uh, dissipation uh, so uh, you have to find a way to dissipate to, to remove all the excessive heat in this case so what do we have here it's a little bit nicer picture of the heatsink uh, you can buy it for five US dollars at Mouser's and uh, you can see that it covers the whole surface what I actually wonder about is whether I can use the standard Raspberry Pi 5 uh, official cooler instead of this his thing I'm not sure about it I, I, I have to get the module to simply put it on and see whether this holes uh, would, would have be would have fit uh, I have done no measurements so I guess it would the only problem would have been 
maybe for this antenna connector. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons. Also check the notification bell. By pressing like and subscribe buttons, you are also supporting this channel and you are making it possible for me to make more videos like this one. The next video is coming soon. Bye.